Today we're gonna talk about one of the worst landing page hero sections in the world, but for a product that has a billion users. Man, this looks like it actually was AI generated. Let's redesign this. I will show you my whole secret process of analyzing, annotating, redesigning and annotating again. After this video, you will know how to make websites way better, way faster and without the slop like AI images or effortlessly or seamlessly. LinkedIn is a professional network with over a billion users and this is what their hero section looks like before you sign in. Now, why is it like that? Obviously, when you have a billion users and everybody knows that, especially at the beginning of their professional career, they need to be on LinkedIn, then yeah, you don't really need to try anymore, right? But at the same time, there's so much wrong with this website. Here is an exercise for you. Take a look at this, pause the video and try to figure out what would you fix and then look at all my annotations and see if you found the same things that I did. Okay, now let's start with the annotations. I will be very precise here and I will take my time explaining every single design decision. This is also how we do it at our company Square Black when working for clients. First thing that I always do is to create some vertical lines to see how the eye is being guided by the content. The biggest issue here is that the headline and the buttons are left aligned and then all that stuff underneath the buttons is center aligned. Our brain really hates alignment changes like that. Headlines are more readable and work better when the longer sentence is at the top and the shorter at the bottom. Here we have the exact opposite, which makes this weird jagged right edge that doesn't really help you focus on what's coming next. Then we have the roundness of the element, which basically moves it near the bottom away from the CTA. The person is positioned diagonally, but then all the things in the bookshelves are vertical. That creates a lot of extra lines and directions and our brain is being overloaded by stimuli here. Let's start with the headline. It's very vague and it doesn't really mention why you should join. It just says that there is some professional community. There is also no padding and a circle inside the button that's practically touching the top and bottom edges. The blue button is not the LinkedIn main color, but it's not the Google color either. But even if it was the Google blue, why would you show a different company branding color on the CTA of your own company? The second white button is also a little bit taller than the blue one, which adds to the inconsistencies. We already mentioned that there is no visual funnel going down on the right side of the content because the headline is badly structured and it's left aligned and then the next section is center aligned. That's just a lot of confusion. The top menu has inconsistent styles and colors of the icons. Some are filled, some are partially filled and they don't really look like they're matching. And also why are you showing games in a before sign-in section for a professional platform? That doesn't really sound that professional. LinkedIn is all about real photos of real people. So why are we using clip art that's looking like word art from the late 90s? The second sign-in button on the top right of the screen has yet another height. There is absolutely zero consistency in buttons on this one screen. However, if they wanted to show more of those collaborative articles and have people understand that's a big feature of the platform, showing them above the fold like this might be a good idea. But I don't really know if prioritizing sign-ins shouldn't be more important here. And all those extra links, articles, games or whatever are taking you away from the incentive to sign in or sign up. For a platform with a billion users, yeah, this kind of looks like it was AI generated, but we can do better. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna use the principles from a couple of my video courses, mainly the boring UI course and the web design courses, and I'm gonna apply them into my redesign. You can get those courses in the description down below a little bit cheaper if you want to level up much faster. After I'm done, I'm gonna do the same exercise of annotation of my redesign so you see why different things are changed the way they are, including one little arbitrary change that normally I wouldn't do, but in this case, I just had to. So keep watching and let's go. 
When figuring out what to redesign and how, I need to first make a little list of what we really need to know about this particular website. What are their strong points? What are the key features? What it does exactly? Because you don't really get that from their current website. So I sat down and made a little mind map diagram that helped me figure out what to write for the redesign. Always start your design with a type frame. Don't go straight for the visuals because what you really need to do is create the right optical alignment, the right font hierarchy and obviously pick the right copy first. Then the visuals are there to augment it. This is what I believe is a much, much better hero section. And let me explain why, going step by step and annotating it for you. As you can see, what I went for is a lot more of that human factor, much cleaner and clearer copy, less of it, and more consistency in buttons, in font sizes, in everything. This redesign took about 15 minutes and the longest part of it was actually finding the photos of people to put in that little grid on the right side. This already looks miles ahead of what's out there right now. Now let's go and annotate it step by step to explain every design decision. This is what you should be doing when both making a case study, and by the way, you can check out my case study course down in the description below as well, or when working for a client, when you want to feel professional and you don't really want to get a lot of feedback. My first high fidelity option also went with a much more complex and condensed hero section, but that's just too much for your brain to handle, so I went with this instead. Let's start with the vertical lines. As you can see, they're all going in a similar direction and especially the right edge of the entire content is kind of going towards the buttons and the sign up link. This entire layout is just organized in a way that guides your eye to the buttons. Let's start with the top menu. The first thing I did is I recolored LinkedIn because I really don't like that color, but obviously for a real redesign, it should stay in both the logo and the button. Then I removed all the silly stuff like games and kept the only three most useful options like finding people, jobs and articles. The rest is hidden in more. The two main actions, creating an account and signing in, are small and repeated where people expect them, but they don't need to be buttons anymore. They don't need to compete for attention with the main CTA. Let's start from the top. I started with extreme social proof that they failed to mention on their current website. But when I googled it, I realized that they do have a billion members from over 200 countries. This is an extreme level of social proof and not including this sounds kind of silly. When there is a billion members, you don't really necessarily need to focus on problem solving. Just say what it is and for whom. So in here, I just said it's the world's largest network for business professionals. And underneath that, a short list of the main benefits like jobs, thought leaders and business opportunities. One single blue button gets you to register or sign in. Then the secondary action is a clear link that's underlined so people can clearly get what it is and what it does. LinkedIn is a social network after all, and it has a billion members. So I decided for the key visual that we should connect the social proof while just showing the people on the platform. That whole grid could move a little bit and some of those people could fade more into view with little boxes showing where they're from and what they do. It's not really a privacy violation because you can already search for people on the platform without having an account. And this is the best way to showcase how your social network is working, showing hundreds and thousands of professionals at your fingertips. By taking a proper, logical approach to this, we are saving the users from a lot of cognitive overload while at the same time providing them quickly with all the benefits registering for the platform provides them. There is nothing random, arbitrary or decorative here. Only the essentials. And if you put them side by side, I think it's pretty clear which version is a lot better. Now, the best way to present it to a client, if it's a client project, or to show it in your portfolio, is to show both. 
But what we always do is we modify the color of one of the annotations to clearly show which one is the before and which one is the after. And we often use, if possible, green for the after. So that shows that the red ones are the ones that are wrong and then the green or blue ones are the ones that are working fine and they are the ones that we should be following. That simple change is primed by our instincts and color theory. Red is usually danger or something negative and green or blue are usually positive. So even before people start reading your annotations, they already know they're gonna be good. Now, the only thing left is for you to make them good. And this is how you do it. You can practice with my videos or with my courses and just do it 10 times faster. You can get the links to everything down in the description below. Thanks for watching and obviously have a beautiful day.